Hey everybody, it's Ron from Pick Dogs, and this is Ron's Rundown. We're going to go over the MLB game scheduled for Thursday, August 11th, 2022. Now, if you like what you see, make sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel. Helps us out a ton. Don't forget to put your baseball picks in the comments section below. And if you're looking for my MLB best bets, you can find those at the premium picks tab at pickdogs.com. Of course, I'm always running my $15 MLB best bet, so check it out at Pick Dogs Premium. Alrighty, here we go. Here are the games for Thursday, August 11th. First up, we see the Miami Marlins taking on the Philadelphia Phillies. Edward Cabrera and Kyle Gibson are your projected starters for this one. Now, Edward Cabrera has pitched 20 and two-thirds innings this season at the big league level. A 2.61 ERA ain't too bad at all. 23 strikeouts in those innings, 1.06 whip. Really the only concerning sign to see in Cabrera's game has been the walks. 12 walks allowed, that's over 5 walks per 9. However, when you look at the Philadelphia Phillies, at least in the last 30 days, Against right-handed pitching, this team is not really walking a lot. You look, one of the lower walk rates in baseball in the last month or so, Philadelphia, a 5.4% walk rate as a team, which is actually 28th in the league rank. So if Cabrera's not really getting into issues with the free passes, I think he'll have a decent outing here. He had a really good start last time out against the Cubs. Five innings, no earned runs. He did have those three walks, but eight strikeouts. And he actually didn't give up a hit, a hit in that outing. So really strong start for him. I think he pitches well here. On the other side, Kyle Gibson's pitching well as of late, but I still don't necessarily trust his game. He has an issues with the walks as well recently. The home run balls also hurt him at times this season. Strikeout numbers aren't very good for him this year. And I think the Marlins can score maybe a run or two on Gibson. That might be enough for a run line cover. I expect a really low scoring game. I lean towards the under, but I'm going to take the Miami Marlins here plus the one and a half as a live road dog. In our next matchup, we see the Cleveland Guardians taking on the Detroit Tigers. Zach Plezak and Garrett Hill are your starters for this one. Now, Zach Plezak may not be my favorite option to back on the mound, but I do like the Guardians lineup against Garrett Hill, and I think Plezak's good enough here for the Guardians to grab a win on the road. When you look at the Detroit Tigers, they're just not doing anything against right-handed pitching. The fourth highest strikeout rate of the team in the last 30 days, dead last in both Team OPS and Isolated Power in the last month against righties as well. And Zach Plezak just faced this Tigers lineup back on July 15th. In three and two-thirds innings, he wasn't his best. He gave up five unearned runs, but only two of those were earned. And the Guardians were still able to win that game 6-5. to five. That was in Cleveland. Against Garrett Hill, this Guardians lineup, very, very good against right-handed pitching. I think they'll be able to get to Hill for quite a few runs early on. Tigers' bullpen's been good this season, but the early, the long relievers I'm a little worried about if they have to make their way into this game early. I think the Guardians get to Hill quite often this one. I think it's enough for Plezak to just get them four or five innings of decent baseball and earn a win here on the road. Give me the Cleveland Guardians on the money line. Next up, we see the Chicago White Sox taking on the Kansas City Royals. Dylan Cease and Zach Greinke are your starters for this one. If you guys have watched the rundown from the beginning of the year, you know that I've been pretty critical of Zach Greinke this season. However, I actually backed him in his last start against the Red Sox. I thought it was a good matchup for him. He's, he was pitching well at Kauffman Stadium, but he did me dirty. He went four and two-thirds innings, seven hits, four earned runs, two walks, didn't get the win. The Red Sox won seven to four. So I'm fading Greinke again, going back to my roots here. And uh, although he's pitching well overall at 2.23 at uh, Kauffman Stadium, his struggles last start show me that the White Sox could certainly get to him here, and I think they will. Dylan Cease on the other side has been the hottest pitcher in baseball, hasn't given up more than one earned run in a single start since May 24th. And although he's faced some weak lineups in that stretch, this is another weak lineup that he's facing here in Kansas City. So I think Cease delivers again. I don't know if the streak will continue, but I don't even think it needs to for the White Sox to win this game and earn the run line cover. Give me the White Sox here laying the one and a half runs. Next up, we see the Texas Rangers taking on the Houston Astros. Cole Reagans and Framber Valdez are your projected starters. Now, I have to admit, I know Framber Valdez is on the mound. I know the Astros are home. They play very well at home. But I was surprised to see this price where it is. Minus 300 plus for the Astros at home. I'm not sure I can get behind that. I mean, Framber Valdez has struggled at home this year. ERA at 4.01. The Rangers do hit lefties pretty well. But where I'm headed right now with this game is the team total over for the Houston Astros. I do like their matchup offensively. I think that's the reason why they are big favorites. Cole Reagan's a rookie going into his second start. He was good in his first, in his MLB debut. He went five innings, no earned runs, but he gave up one un unearned run. He had four walks, which is concerning. Only three strikeouts in five innings. He was known to be a strikeout guy going into that first start. So to only see him uh, earn three Ks in those five innings, 
that's a little bit worrisome. The Astros, number four in the league in the last 30 days in isolated power against lefties. Top 15 in team OPS. They don't strike out much as a team themselves. So they actually have the lowest uh, team K rate against lefties in the last 30 days. 15.5%. So if Reagan's not getting those strikeouts, if he's a little bit losing his control and walking some batters and has some issues with the home run ball, mm, I don't like him in this outing here. I'm going to take the team total over for the Houston Astros over four and a half runs. Next up, we see the St. Louis Cardinals taking on the Colorado Rockies at 310 Eastern start time. Herman Marquez for the Rockies and Dakota Hudson for the Cardinals. Now, when I saw this pitching matchup and I saw this game, Immediately, I thought of the first game of this series is the pitching matchup looks kind of similar. You look at Ryan Feltner, ERA above five going into that start. Ramon Marquez, the same thing at 5.118. Now, Marquez has had a lot of experience at Coors Field. Hasn't had a ton of success this year, but I will say he's pitching much better recently than he did the beginning of the year. So I do think Marquez can be trustworthy to get the Rockies at least four or five okay innings. It's Coors Field probably going to score. Uh, the Cardinals are probably going to score a few runs no matter what, but I think Marquez can get the Rockies some necessary innings. Where I really struggle to get behind St. Louis here is they're a big favor on the road with Dakota Hudson, who's a pitch-to-contact guy. And like I mentioned, the first game of the series with Miles Michaelis, who is also a pitch-to-contact guy, they just usually don't do too well at Coors Field. And I'd say Michaelis is having a much better season than Dakota Hudson is. You look at Dakota Hudson, hasn't really pitched too deep into ball games recently. He's giving up some walks, not striking out batters at all. Eight In his last eight and a third innings, only three strikeouts, four walks. So more walks than strikeouts. Five earned runs, 11 base hits. He's been inconsistent this year. The home run balls hurt him at times, and I think this is going to be a really tough spot for him. He's got a 5.26 ERA on the road this year. I don't like him at Coors Field against the Rockies lineup that's just crushing righties lately. We know this team to be more of a lefty killer, but they're actually hitting righties better than lefties recently. So I'm going to take the Colorado Rockies here on the run line, getting one and a half runs. I'd also take a look at that team total over for Colorado and the full game over because I could see the Cardinals getting to Herman Marquez in this week, Rockies bullpen as well. To me, this game's like a 9-8 to eight over all the way. Uh, I think the Rockies have a chance to win it. I think they're going to be able to cover it on the run line at least. So give me the one and a half runs here with Colorado and the team total over as well. Next up, we see the Pittsburgh Pirates taking on the Arizona Diamondbacks. JT Brubaker and Merle Kelly on the mound for this one. Now, JT Brubaker is not in the greatest form. When you look at his last few outings, giving up a ton of base hits, giving up a lot of earned runs as well. The strikeouts are still there here and there, but... You know, he's looking at his last eight and a third innings, 12, 20 base hits, 10 earned runs, a home or two walks. He does have those 10 strikeouts, but those strikeouts aren't enough when you're giving up that many base runners. And the Pirates have lost each of the last five starts that Brubaker's had. A few of those games on the run line as well. Merrill Kelly's been pitching really, really well at home on the road. A 2.86 ERA overall, 2.91 at Chase Field. And last start against the Rockies, seven innings, two earned runs, five Ks. Like I mentioned, Rockies are red hot against righties, so... That was a very sharp start for Kelly. And unlike that last game against the Rockies, I think his offense backs him up here. Give me the Arizona Diamondbacks on the run line in this one. Next up, we see the Baltimore Orioles taking on the Boston Red Sox. I'm actually quite excited for this series. As the Red Sox, they have struggled. There are a few games under 500, but this is always a rivalry series. And now the Orioles have something to play for here. They're trying to make a playoff push. And I like Austin Voth in this matchup. We see Austin Voth and Josh Winkowski. Voth has been really sharp as a starting pitcher. Now, I watched his last start against the Pirates. He didn't have his best stuff. I will say that. It was a little concerning watching him pitch. Gave up a homer to O'Neill Cruz. It was a no-doubter. And I, I would say it wasn't his best outing. But he still went five innings, five Ks. Only three earned runs. And the Orioles won that game pretty comfortably. I think Voth has to sharpen it up here. It's going to be at Fenway Park. But I still like what I've seen from him as a starting pitcher. I think making the move to starter was a good decision the Orioles made. And you look at Josh Winkowski. I cannot back him right here. At Fenway Park, the Orioles are crushing righties. Winkowski's got a 6.18 ERA at home this season. He's given up home runs galore. And I think the Orioles bats a team that's one of the top teams in baseball against righties in the last month. Number seven in Team OPS. you got guys like Adley Rutschman that are leading the league in on-base percentage since the All-Star break. And guys like Anthony Santander who are crushing homers left and right. I like this Orioles lineup against Winkowski. I think Voth's good enough here. I think the Orioles have the much better bullpen, and the Orioles have a lot more to play for, in my opinion. Give me the Baltimore Orioles here at a really good price on the money line. In our final game of the night, we see the Chicago Cubs taking on the Cincinnati Reds in the Field of Dreams game. We're going to see Drew Smiley and Nick Lodolo on the mound for this one. Last year's Field of Dreams game 
Wow, what a game that was. White Sox, Yankees, back and forth. Home runs galore into the cornfields. It was a game where the Yankees had a lead late. The White Sox came back and won it. And, uh, you know, although these two teams, the Reds and Cubs, not really playing for much in terms of playoffs or in the standings, still hoping for a pretty exciting game overall. Should be a pretty emotional one as well. So, you know, in this game, two lefty pitchers. The Cubs, I would say, have the better numbers offensively against lefties, at least as of late. Nick Lodolo struggling against the Brewers was pretty surprising to me. When you look at the Brewers' numbers against lefties, they haven't been good at all. They strike out a ton. They don't really walk a lot. The team OPS and isolated power numbers were near the bottom of the league. It really set up for a nice outing for Lodolo, but he struggled, gave up a couple homers. The walks were an issue, so I really can't back him in this spot. I'm going to take the Chicago Cubs here. Not my favorite game on the board in terms of betting, but entertainment-wise, should be a fun one to watch. Give me the Cubs here on the money line. And that's it. Those are the games for Thursday, August 11th. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe. And don't forget to put your baseball picks in the comments section below. Again, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at Pick Dogs Premium. As always, this is Ron Romanelli. Good luck.